Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying the fruit of the Spirit, and we are now talking about the the ninth fruit, the self-control. Self-control, and we're talking about right now self-control over your soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And so yesterday I read to you 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Second Corinthians 10, three, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world or they are not carnal. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Verse five, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. We take captive every thought. We take captive every thought. Do I sound like a broken record? We take captive every thought. That's something that you need to do. God doesn't do it for you. You know, I heard somebody say one time, they asked a preacher to pray for them. And they said, pray for me that I never have any bad thoughts. (laughs) And the preacher said, well, if I prayed that, I'd have to pray for you to die and go to heaven. Because that would mean being out of this body. As long as you're in the natural body, we are in this world. As long as we are in this world, there is a devil. The devil is the one who brings to you negative thoughts, fearful thoughts, worried thoughts, anxious thoughts, bad thoughts of any kind. And so we have to be free of the devil in order to be free completely from having any bad thought. But we do have authority over our thoughts, and that is self-control, ruling over your thoughts. So again, it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You know, if you are a person who does struggle a lot with bad thoughts, negative thoughts, fearful thoughts, depressed thoughts, whatever kind of thought, but a bad thought, you can even use this scripture as one of your weapons. It says we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. We take captive every thought. We take captive every thought. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And so that is our part. God doesn't do it. You do it. You take captive over every thought. And we also looked yesterday at Philippians chapter four, verses six through eight. It says, do not be anxious about anything about how much anything. Is it okay to worry about your finances? No. Is it okay to worry about your children? No. Is it okay to worry about your job? No. Is it okay to worry about the affairs of the nation and politics? No. Nothing is okay to worry about. Nothing. It says don't be anxious or worried about anything. Why? Because worry is also fear. Fear and worry are the opposite of faith. Let me say it again. Fear and worry are the opposite of faith. So if you're in fear or worry, you are not in faith. Faith is rest. Faith is trust. Believing God to take care of it. So if you're worried, you're not trusting. They are the opposite of faith. When you're in faith, you trust and you don't worry. It is not okay to worry. Do not be anxious or worried. Other translations say about anything, about anything. Do not be worried about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. You know, thanksgiving is an act of faith. When you are in faith and you are believing God for something, Whether it's believing God for your finances or believing for your healing or believing for your children or your job or whatever, giving thanks and praise to God for the end result before you see it, 
before it comes to pass, that is the act of faith. Giving thanks and praise to God. Thank you, Lord. All my needs are met before you see the money. Thank you, Lord. My body is healed before you see, look or feel healed. Thank you, Lord, for this job or this job promotion before you get it. Thanksgiving is an act of faith. Yes, you thank God for what he has already done. You should always thank God for what he has done. A thankful heart is a humble heart. An unthankful heart is a proud heart. Let me say it again. A thankful heart is a humble heart. An unthankful heart is a proud heart. So if you're unthankful and not thanking God for things that he's done for you, you're proud. But not only do you thank him for what he has already done, you also thank him for what you believe him to do, what has not yet happened. And that is your act of faith, believing, trusting, resting in God to do something for you that you have not yet seen or received. You thank him for it. So you are entering, you are activating your faith by thanking him. Thank you, Lord. This is taken care of. Praise the Lord. And then you choose to enter into rest and don't be anxious or worried. Give thanks to God for taking care of it, for resolving the problem, for providing the need, and then enter into rest. So by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. It will guard your heart and mind. It will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Thanks. So I was sharing with you yesterday, you have to take captive every thought, as it says in Second Corinthians 10, 5, and you do it by casting it down in the name of Jesus, by saying, I cast that thought down in Jesus name. I silence you, Satan, shut up in Jesus name. And God's word says, and then you quote the scripture by his stripes, I was healed. My God shall supply all my needs. He shall deliver me from all harm. Whatever is the promise that you're believing for, all my children are taught by the Lord. And you answer the thought. I gave the testimony yesterday how several years ago, five, six years ago, I think, I was here at home and we have a two story and I was climbing the stairs and actually for about two weeks, Every time I climbed the stairs, a thought crossed my mind. The thought was, you're going to fall down the stairs and break your neck. And even not only when I was climbing the stairs, but even when I was walking across the landing at the top of the stairs. Every time I passed the stairs on the landing, I would have the thought, you're going to fall down the stairs and break your neck. And that thought kept coming to me for two weeks. I was ignoring it. I would just brush it aside and ignore it. But after about two weeks, the Holy Spirit spoke very clearly to me. As I was climbing the stairs, the thought came, you're going to fall down the stairs and break your neck. The thought came from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, answer that thought. Answer that thought. And he spoke it like a command. Like, Cherry, quit tolerating that thought. Answer that thought. And I knew I had to answer out loud. Words dominate thoughts. You get it? Words dominate thoughts. And so I answered that thought out loud. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I will never fall down the stairs And I will never break my neck. I take authority over that thought. I cast it down in Jesus name and Satan. I silence you. And actually yesterday I said that thought never came back again, but actually it did come back a few years later 
and I answered it again and then it didn't come back. You know, sometimes the devil tries just one more attempt to try to get you to accept something. And so I actually was mistaken yesterday. It did come back a few years later, but then I resisted it again. I knew it immediately. And I answered that thought. No, I will never fall down the stairs. I will never break my neck. And then that thought never came back again. So it, it he, the devil did try again, but he was defeated because I cast the thought down. And so it's the same with any kind of negative thought, any kind of fearful thought. The thought comes, you're going to get in a car accident. So you say, no, in the name of Jesus, I will not be in a car accident. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. God watches over me and protects me and delivers me from all harm. And you quote the scriptures. And like I said yesterday, you can go to my website at victoriousfaith.co. That's victorious like a champion, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, C-O like Colorado. Go to the list called Help from God's Word and get a list of scripture promises. The lists are printable, so just click on the print icon at the top of the page and you can print out the list so that you can speak these scriptures every single day and Get them in your memory, get them in your heart so that you can speak them whenever you get these negative thoughts and you can cast down those negative thoughts and speak the scriptures. And at the bottom of every list of scriptures, there is also a scripture confession that puts the scriptures into a confession format or declaration. But you can just speak these scriptures and confess them to cast down and replace every negative evil thought that comes into your mind. So find these scriptures for whatever your need is. I've got a lot of them on there. Probably anything you would probably need is probably on there. And if it's not there, you can go to the Bible and find it for yourself. But get the Bible promises for whatever is your area of need or to answer whatever is the negative, fearful thought that you're having. And then you answer the thought by saying, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that thought. I cast it down. I I break its power in Jesus name. And I say, I silence you, Satan. And then you speak the scripture. You speak the promise. By his stripes, I'm healed. My God supplies all my needs. My children are taught by the Lord and great shall be my children's peace. My God delivers me from all harm. No harm will come near me. And you answer the thought with the word of God. That's how you get victory over thoughts. Words dominate thoughts and you have to speak the word of God to dominate the thoughts of the devil. Every negative thought is from the devil. Let me say that again. Every negative thought is from the devil. If you're a born again Christian, if you're a born again Christian, you have God in you. You are a reborn spirit. You are made new. As it says in second Corinthians five seventeen. the old things are gone. Behold, all things have been made new. You are a new recreated human spirit with God living in you. So from the Holy Spirit living in you, God is going to be bringing to you life giving thoughts, life giving thoughts, joyful thoughts, thoughts of hope for the future. So every negative, fearful thought is external in its source. Every negative, fearful thought to a Christian is external, has an external source, and it is the devil. As it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows or the fiery darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is The word of God, the helmet of salvation protects your mind. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is your offensive weapon. And verse 18 and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And I'll stop there. So 
you can win the victory over negative thoughts, fearful thoughts, worried thoughts, anxious thoughts, thoughts of death, thoughts of sickness, thoughts of lack and poverty, whatever it is, thoughts of defeat, whatever it is, you can get victory. You answer the thought with your words by speaking God's promises. And so that is your responsibility. God has given you his word. And verse 17 says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, that is your offensive weapon. The shield of faith is defensive, but the sword of the spirit is offensive. So you take that word of God, you wield it like a weapon. You speak his words, his promises as a weapon against the devil, against every negative, fearful thought, and get into your situation, whatever it is, you speak the word of God. As I said before, once or twice or whatever, if you will work the word, the word will work for you. If you will work the word, the word will work for you. You need to work the word. That means speak it. Believe it, live by it, act on it. It will work for you. It will produce results every time. Praise God. So we are taking control or, or ruling over our mind. And then not only your mind, remember your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Now let me mention the emotions. There are Christians who lose control of their emotions. For example, you're a person who loses their temper, is getting angry. They are losing control of their emotions. You are to exercise control over your feelings, your emotions, your temper. In James 1, Verse 19, verses 19 to 25. It says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Slow to become angry. Verse 20. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. So you see, you should be slow to be come angry because it does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. And so we are not to become angry. And then Proverbs 16, 32 in the King James version, 16, 32 Proverbs 16, 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. The NIV says better a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. And so we are to control emotions. Anger for one. Another emotion you need to control is discouragement. Discouragement. Depression. And sad to say, there are a lot of Christians who are depressed. They are on antidepressants. Well, that ought not be. And let me give you an example. In First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 30, David and his mighty men had returned to their home to find their wives and children and possessions had all been taken captive by an enemy, by an enemy army. They came home and everything was gone. David and his mighty men. So then his mighty men all became discouraged. And then they talked about stoning David because David, you led us away. And if we had been here, we could have defended our wife, our wives, children and and possessions. So they were talking about, Stoning David. So in first Samuel 30 verse six, it says in the King James, 
And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. When everything around him looked bad, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3, Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18 say, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Now, we talked about this when we talked about joy. Joy is a choice. Joy is a choice. You can choose to let your flesh rule you and get you down and discouraged when things go wrong. Or... You can say, yet I will rejoice and I will be joyful in God, my savior. In Psalm 35, nine, it says, then my soul will rejoice. Noticing the words will rejoice. I will rejoice. Notice that the word will is your willpower. So there is a choice of. It's a will is making a decision. That's what I mean. The will is making a decision and a choice. So I will do this is to make a choice to do something. So you are choosing and making a decision to rejoice. I will rejoice in the Lord. My soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. And then, you know, Philippians four, four says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So you have authority over your emotions. You are supposed to exercise control of your mind, your thoughts of every negative thought. We all have to do it. It's not necessarily easy, but we can do it. And of course, This is something that has to be done diligently. Sad to say we can't do it once for and for all and forever. It's gone. Thoughts, bad thoughts will not be gone forever. We have to do it diligently. We diligently keep a guard. We diligently, it's like standing guard over your mind. You don't let down. Standing guard over your emotions, your temper or any discouragement, or depression, you choose to be at peace, you choose to be at rest, you choose to rejoice and be joyful in God no matter what is going on. This is exercising self-control over your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. Now let me mention one more And that is self-control over your spirit. Now, what do you mean, Cherry, over your spirit? Well, let me just show you the scripture. Two scriptures in Proverbs 16, 32. The second part of the verse in the King James. Better is he that rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Better is he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. And 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 30 to 32. This is Paul's instruction to the church at Corinth about prophecy. He said in verse 30, And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. Verse 31, For you can all prophesy in turn. Now notice he said you can all prophesy. You can all prophesy in turn. So that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. Verse 32. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. Now, what is this saying? You cannot say, I can't help it. 
I can't help it. You know, people, for example, once in a while, when people are untaught and untrained and they are wanting to practice the gifts of the spirit and they start speaking out in tongues or prophecy, they just sometimes will blurt out something and it's an interruption in the meeting. Well, they might say, but I just couldn't help it. I had to say it. No, that's not true. Your spirit and everything that comes out of you is under your control. Your mouth is under your control. Your body is under your control. Your mind is under your control. Even operating in the gifts of the spirit, you can shut it down. You can hold it. You can. And if it is God, if it is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not going to be an interrupter. The Holy Spirit does things in order. And that's what Paul is writing about doing things in order. So it is, you cannot say, I can't help my thoughts. You cannot say, I can't help my temper. You cannot say, I can't help my fist. It just happened to hit my wife's face. You cannot say, I cannot help, you know, blurting out things and saying things. You know, some people do that. They say something and they blurt it out and they say, oh, I'm sorry. I just can't help it. You are deceived. You can help it. You have authority and control over your spirit, soul, and body. Now join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.